Well, it's been worth the wait. Good evening and welcome to Glen Goyne Live. Uh, this is a very special event, a first on the internet, giving you, the very valued members of the Glen Goyne family, a chance to choose the next bottling. Let me tell you where we are tonight. For those of you who haven't been here before, we're in the Glen Goyne Distillery, which is on the southwest edge of the Scottish Highlands. Now, this distillery has been continuously producing beautiful Glen Goyne whisky since 1833. Tonight, we are in Warehouse 8, rich in history and blooming freezing as well. Late autumn, of course, here in Scotland, but still rain was falling earlier. It's stopped now. Still, despite all of that, one of the most beautiful distilleries in Scotland. Let me talk you through the process, what's going to happen tonight. Live on air, we're going to open three casks here. We're going to do a very detailed tasting with lots of notes and explanations as well. Then we're going to give you the chance to ask some questions and to vote and decide which of these three casks will be the new bottling of Glen Goyne. And after that, after eight o'clock this evening, you will get a chance to buy exclusively that special bottling of Glen Goyne. It's a limited edition chance as well. To talk us through proceedings this evening, we have our two Glen Goyne experts. So let's give a big welcome and warm ourselves up and say hello to Stuart Henry, Brand Heritage and Commercial Manager, and Robbie Hughes, Distillery Manager. Oh, Evening, gentlemen. How you doing? Uh, a little dram to warm us up first. What are we getting started with here before we even look at these? We're on Glen Goyne 15 year old. So this will be, be lighter, fresher than the whiskies we're going to taste. And we just thought it was a good way to oil our palate and, and get us in the mood. A little so. palate cleanser. 15 year old. Cheers <laughs> to you both. Yep, right. Thanks. Great evening ahead of us here. Um, tell us, Robbie, to start with, this warehouse is a very special place. What makes a good warehouse for Glen Goyne whiskey? Well, as you can see, it's dull, it's dark, it's dusky, it's damp. You know, it's uh, got the perfect conditions for maturing whiskey. It's very airy as well, and it's what's called a traditional Dunwich warehouse, Stephen. So what you can see, this kind of uh, maturation process has been going on for centuries in Scotland. It's just casks with a couple of rails on, another row of casks, then another rail, and they just build it up until it's three high, and then you leave it alone for 25 years and just allow it to breathe in the atmosphere slowly over the over a quarter of a decade. So that's part of what makes Glen Goyne part special. Uh, Stuart, w what else gives the very special character that we all love with Glen Goyne? I'd say the main attributes would be firstly that we add no smoke. We dry our barley using only warm air, so it gives it a clean, fresh taste. And we also distill more slowly than any of the almost 100 or so malt whisky distilleries in Scotland. And we do that to keep the spirit in touch with the copper for as long as possible. And the copper will help us create sweet ester flavours, which come across in our new make spirit. And even after a quarter of a century in the cask, that Glen Goyne house style still shines through after all these years. So and that's very slow, slow. Slow maturation, as it says here, unhurried since 1833, never has changed, never will change, because it's what gives the character to Glen Goyne. It's all about the attention to detail. That's what Glen Goyne is. You know, it's from the very start right into here, just the guys putting their own fingerprint on it, just doing the same thing that they were taught from the previous generation, and that guy was taught from the previous generation, and you could probably trace Glen going back right to its roots, and what we're doing is what was done right back in 1833. Okay. We, don't, we don't change it, we just keep it as it is. Now essentially, you are going to be the noses for the Glen Goyne audience this evening. You're going to taste and talk us through. I'm here as I'm here as a punter, basically, to put my pennies worth in, but you are the experts. Can we get a nice big close-up, maybe of Stuart's nose here, and just see, because this, this nose is worth a lot of money tonight to you people out here. What are you going to be looking for, and what can we maybe expect, before we even get started, what can we expect to find in these casks? Well, we've got, we've got three sherry casks here, Stephen. So these are first fill sherry casks. They're made from European oak, all of them, uh, which gives its own particular style and we'll, I'm sure we'll cover that as we go. These casks were filled with Oloroso sherry for almost three years after the, the, the wood was first dried in the sun in Spain for, for another three years. So six years getting these casks ready. It's like a big sponge soaked with sherry and then we just put our new make spirit on it, leave it alone and a quarter of a century later, well, we'll see what comes out. So. It's just remarkable to think these the oak trees, the Spanish maturation with the sherry has led us to this point in the Glen Goyne distillery on a late autumn evening. It's been a long journey, you know, and it's uh, 
but it's been worthwhile. You know, we've we've got three casks here, even though they they do look very similar, and the, the starting point was the same. You know, yet they've all gone on a different journey in their own individual casks, and that's one of the mysteries of actual maturing whisky. Nobody really knows what's going to happen once you put that new spirit in these casks. So this is this is quite exciting for us. And the casks are are so, so important to this. And these, I mean, these are valuable. When they come to you, what's the cost of a cask before we even put the whiskey in, Robbie? These are the most expensive casks that uh, we buy. These are around about 750 to 800 pounds each for just one of these, one of these butts. And because uh, the, sh the sherry story is a big part of Glengoyne, uh, we do need to keep investing a lot of money in this particular type of wood. And I mean, my boss, Gordon Doctor, he tells me often um, how expensive these are because he's got to be the guy that signs them off. But without these, the old Glengoyne story just falls. It falls. We, we need to buy expensive wood. And that's the same about the whole process from the very start. What we do, we do it laboriously and we do take the time and the effort. You know, you could take shortcuts and make it cheaper, but then that's not Glengoyne. That's, that's, some, that's another journey that we don't want to go on. So you've got to spend £750 and we buy thousands of these. Yeah. And we have complete traceability. We know, we know the forest that came from the north of Spain. We know the cooper that made the cask. We know the bodega that, that, that matured it. We know the sherry that went in. We know the sherry makers. Everything from, the, from when it's in the, the forest to when it gets here, you can trace right back. You can buy casks on the open market, but that's not the Glen Goyne way. It's and the that's part of the expense. To it's the attention to detail. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we've got people watching tonight who've already been in touch with us. Hi, guys, from right around the world. We've got people in uh, throughout Europe, people in South America as well. Uh, voting, save your votes until quarter, because you only get one vote, so do not waste it. Let's go through each of the casks carefully first and then make our decisions at the end, because you choose tonight what will be the new Glen Goyne. So I think with palettes cleansed, one last will be going. It's time to get started this evening with our first cask, cask A on the end here. Talk us through the process that we're going to do with each of these casks, <coughs> gentlemen. What we're going to do is we're going to take a, a sample from each cask. Uh, we're going to fill up the glass, uh, glass jar here and we're just going to establish the strength. We're going to have a look at the colour, really just let the, the viewers see how you go about getting the strength of a whiskey. And it's actually nice for us as well to pull it out and just to look at, look at it, you know, in this, this atmosphere. Uh, it's, it's really just bucked off the roots, isn't it? Yeah. And temperature's key to this. What's temperature in here at the moment, Stuart? Probably, we'll, we'll find out when we go through the process, it'll be down six, seven degrees, something like that. It'll be okay. sing, single uh, figures. It's, right. single figures. it's kind of low. All right, yeah. so cask A, let's get started. This is 25 years old. Kansky. This was distilled on the 29th of August 1988, so it's just over 25 years old. So it's been sitting there waiting for this one moment, Stephen. This is its moment. This is it. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Right here for you. You've got your glamorous assistant here tonight, Robbie. Yep. Remember, I this know. is live, so let's not break anything, yeah. eh? We've all go for glamour in this part of Scotland, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> What's this? This is actually a, a piece of kit that has been used for many, many generations, and this is called a dog. Uh, people who worked in this environment, now I'm going back some time, obviously this doesn't happen anymore, Stephen, but people who worked in this environment, they perhaps were a wee dram themselves at some time during the day, and they would carry this, usually down the front of the trousers, just where it couldn't be found, just in case the HMRC guys on site, customs officer, and then at some point they would do what we're about to do, but obviously we're doing it now all legal. Yes, HMRC, all. that doesn't HM. happen. That does, this doesn't happen. Really. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull, pull out a bung. What's fantastic is this is the same way this has always happened here. Technology does not change any of this, does it? No, no, this is it. This, this, is, this has been for centuries, centuries. Just a cork, a wee cork bung, a barrel, whiskey <coughs> inside, and that's it. No straight in, Robbie. What were you getting there that All second? Right. What I get in there, you're getting a blast of alcohol, because obviously it's been locked in a cask for a while, but behind that, follow very quickly, it's fruity. And that's exactly what you'd expect from Glengoyne. And you get this blast of the Oloroso sherry as well, the, the, the European oak. But this isn't really the way, because we're going to have to release it. You know, you're not going to get everything just by sticking your nose in a cask. Uh, we've got to put it in a, in a glass and really get get into it and dig deep. 
So quickly, with the help of Stuart. First time this has been out of the barrel in 25 years, remember. There it goes. I mean, straight away, the colour is what you'd expect from a sherry cask at Glengoyne. That's, that is standard. It's because darker than I expected it to be. It's a lot darker. Most people will think it's just the golden colour of whiskey. But this type of wood, and this is what we're spending the money on. You know, this is the character that we are looking for. Now, if you bear with me, this is just a few... It'll take a few minutes. And we all know the angel shear. You, the, the, what Robbie's spilling here, would you you'd call that Robbie shear, Stuart? Yeah, this is, this, is the, this is the That's profits. about £6.50 already. <laughs> yeah, this, is the, this is the profits. <laughs> what you see, how much is in that cask? How far down are you going, Robbie? This is actually remarkably high, considering its age. We would expect to lose about 1.5% one, one on a cask this size per year. So after 25 years, you could expect the cask to be somewhere just hovering around about the mid mark, but this is this feels a wee bit higher. This is, I would say, it's about three quarters. So the inches haven't been too greedy. No, they've been good with this they? one. But we need to see what the strength is as well, because you could still have the actual volume, but you could lose the strength. I'm nearly there. Just get a wee bit more. Don't in worry here. about the spillage. The camera crew will lick all that <laughs> off once we're finished here this evening. That's their perk tonight. I think one more ought to do it. And then all we're going to do then is we're going to grab a thermometer. In fact, that's perfect, Stuart. We're going to grab a thermometer and a hydrometer. And it's as simple as that. We'll be able to work out the strength of the alcohol. Okay. So there it is. You can see the colour truly for the first time. Oh, it's just a blast on the fingers. You know, just yeah. <laughs> and again, this is very simple technology. It's just... A thermometer drops in, that tells us how warm or how cold it is. The hydrometer, hopefully this is the right hydrometer. We'll soon find out, Robbie. Yes, it looks perfect, yeah. And that just balances there. Now once the both steady, so once the temperature steady and the hydrometer, we just take the temperature reading, we'll take the hydrometer reading, then we'll just go to this wee book, and based on this we can tell exactly how strong this cask is. I'm thinking this book has probably been with you for a while, Rob. It's been with me yeah. longer than my wife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and she, yeah, she's in the same state, but I hope she's not watching. This is, this is actually six degrees centigrade. Nice. So we're looking, at, we're, look, we're looking at six degrees. And the hydrometer reading on this is 935 Point two. So we just go to the book. If you're just jumping in to join us, you're watching Glengoyne Live, coming to you from the Glengoyne Distillery in Scotland. We're uh, halfway through Cask A here. You've just come in in time here. We haven't had our first tasting yet, though. Robbie, what do you see? 52.6% alcohol. 52 so that was filled 25 years ago at 63.3, and it's dropped down to 52.6. So the angels have had a bit, a bit of a bite out of this. Okay. But yeah. it's a trade-off because what the angels have taken is really what we don't really want. They've, they've took all of the, all of the peaks, all of all the, perhaps the harsher flavors which come from the distillation at the start and they've just blended it and made it nice and soft. And hopefully when we get into this, we'll start picking up that. Does most of the angel shear come at the beginning of the life of the Very early because your alcohol's stronger as well, Stephen. Yeah, so the alcohol's strong at the, st at the start, so that's you get most of evaporation at the very start. And then as the alcohol gets a wee bit weaker as the years pass, the evaporation will slow down as well. Now, uh, Stuart, we're not actually going to taste this one tonight because of the temperature and the time of year we're doing this, aren't we? Yeah, uh, if, you, if you taste whiskey at something like six degrees, it just closes up. You don't get all the flavour, you don't get all the aroma, you miss some of the fruit, you miss some of the oak, some of the sherry. And when, if you want to drink cold whiskey, do it with a whiskey you're not enjoying. If you have a whiskey in your glass that isn't the best you've ever had in a bar, put some ice in it, things are going to be good. If you've got a whiskey you want to experience the flavours, do the opposite. Have it at something like 16, 17, 18 degrees, normal room temperature. It just opens it all out. So Great tip. Okay. For that very reason, <laughs> I have one that we've, we've prepared earlier. Mm -hmm. And this has been an arduous process. I mean, don't think these casts have been magically chosen. We've been bloody weeks in here, Robbie, haven't we? Been tough. Nosing casts, drinking away. Been tough. And Talk just, us through the process, because it started mm -hmm. over there, yeah. looking at casks. Talk mm -hmm. us through the process of choosing, getting to these three. Yeah, well, as Stuart says, I mean, this is a tough job. 
You know, not anybody could do this job. Do they, got, the the, the certain, crew are laughing at this. Have a certain here, metal to, to do this job. <laughs> we, we went around quite a few dozen, and we just, you know, so you have to nose them. You got to do a wee bit of a sip as well. And uh, they're just a lot of them just aren't up to spec for one or two reasons because they might have peaks which you wouldn't enjoy. Uh, well, this type of cask, one of the peaks could be like a sulphury note, you know, coming from after years sitting in a cask, you can get a sulphur like a burnt match. So you kind of you want to avoid casks which are like that. So there's one or two. So we so we had a, a couple of days until we narrowed it down to what you're seeing here. These are three excellent examples. But we haven't done a full. We've done a nosing. A quick nose in, but we haven't done what we're about to do now. Well. And I should point out that this is also the benefit of this is we can take this away and duty pay it. Because what you see there is duty free whiskey. That's duty so free. although the, the crew, I can see them eyeing it up now, that guy's is going back in that cask at the end. <laughs> Otherwise, Robbie gets a lot of problems from HMR, so you're not going to have that. So. Now, before we even get started here, look at the colour difference between those two whiskies. So that's your 15 year old on the left yeah. hand. Right, chaps, it's over to you now. The first proper taste of these, Robbie and Stuart, there you go, this is cask A. And just to remind everyone, that is the 1988 cask 865, 25 years old now. Yeah. First thing you're gonna look at there is the, how it actually moves around the glass. It's almost, it's almost thick and gloopy. It's, and it's gonna, if you hold it up and you can just catch a bit of light, you're gonna watch how that sits in the glass. This has formed a little line, and now 5, 10, 15 seconds in, we're just seeing little pinpricks develop. Mm -hmm. They'll slowly turn into tears, that'll run down the glass, become legs. So before you even put this in your mouth, or even smell it, you're thinking that's full-bodied, there's a high alcoholic strength, it's going to coat your mouth, you're going to experience this flavour for quite a long time in your mouth, just by looking at the way that sticks to the glass, Stephen. So. And most people don't get a chance to drink whisky when it's straight out of the cask. You know, most people will, will buy it, it's, you know, obviously it's in the bottle and it'll have gone through a, you know, filtration, chill filtration, whereas this hasn't because we've just pulled it out. So this is really is our uh, Glengoyne in, in its essence. This is as raw as you can get Glengoyne and oh. it's got a wonderful colour. What would you, how would you describe that? Perhaps not the best light in here, but it's, uh, it's very coppery, isn't it? Mm. Like a it's dark, very, rich copper? It is, something. yeah, it is a dark, rich copper. Again, that is what you'd expect from this, this type of cast it would give you that, that really deep, intense colour. On the nose? <sighs> wow. It's sweet. First thing that hits you is the, is the sweetness that comes through on that. Toffee. Uh, mm. Butterscotch. It's butterscotch, rich. yeah. You get, you get a sense of the sherry that's been in there as well. Yes, There's yeah. a bit of that going on. Yeah. I wish this was smelly vision. And his oakiness, you get the oakiness. 25 years in that <coughs> cask, you're going to get some of the, the oakiness yeah. of the wood as you're well. You're picking that up clearly, yeah, aren't yeah. you? But what you also want to get, and you're getting this as well, is that fruitiness, which comes from the start, which came from 1988 when the guys were distilling it. So it's still got the memory of the distillery. The wood isn't get, having this all of its own way. This is a really fine example of a, of a Glengoyne sherry cask. It's a really fine example. Anything from the sherry for you both? Yeah, yeah, the sherry's there. It, yeah. that, it, it, it's that kind of dry, uh, dried fruitiness, the sort of uh, raisins, sultanas. Uh, if you were to try, if you were to smell a glass of Oloroso mm -hmm. beside this, you would get some similarity going on if you, if you took the two. But it's not having it all its own way. It's not domineering it, though. No, no. You know, it's, it's fundamentally Glengoyne. Right. There's a, there's a dessert in Scotland called sticky toffee pudding, which people of my size tend to eat a lot. <laughs> And Stephen, that's what's in that glass. Mm. It's that kind of Every whiskey you smell is the sticky toffee yeah, pudding, though. Uh, that's probably my, my lunch cup. <laughs> <too>. Even vodka <laughs> smells <laughs> the sticky <laughs> toffee pudding. Yeah. Okay, on the palate. Again, it's just it's very sweet. But it dries. And as it dries, you get a spiciness, a sort yep. of cinnamon type. It dries, doesn't it? Mm. It's, yeah, spicy. Very good. Uh, the traditional thing that people see in Glengoyne in the younger ages are, we talk about green apples and fresh green apples in the 10, 12, 15 year old. With this one, it's, it's apple but it's not that kind of fresh tart apple. It's more of a, I don't know, a red apple or a cooked apple. No, or no. And it leaves you that, if you peel the, the skin off a, a grape, 
and just kind of in your mouth is that kind of tannins coming yeah, right. from that as well. Maybe you know? slightly stewed fruit, it stewed is. with the I cinnamon. Right. In there. No, yeah. you're absolutely, yeah. You can I get a job right. of Glengoyne. <laughs> Yeah. The younger ones tend to be sort of fresh fruits. That you're right. It's more like a cooked fruit or a something stewed. Yeah. It's mm. it's, a, it's a damn fine whiskey. It is. It's got a wee wee bitterness at the back edge there. You know, very almost. It's not metallic-y, but it's got that bitterness coming at the back end. It's and long, it, isn't it's it? It's long. Yeah, but it's it's kind of turned into wee bit. It's it's underneath your tongue and around the side. It's and the best uh, way to taste it, you don't need a lot of whiskey in your mouth to taste it. You just need to get it all around your mouth, get it under your fillings, under your tongue, get it right around your mouth. You can even spit if you want. I don't know if you're driving later, Stephen. We're going to try and stop that. <laughs> we'll get you a taxi. But, uh, Robbie says, a great example of Glengoyne. Stuart, would you, would you agree with that? I, I would. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, Glengoyne can be, it can be so different. I mean, this compared with a Glengoyne 10-year-old, there is a, a similarity in the, in, the, in the style in terms of that fruitiness and the, the sherry. With this one, it's a 25 years in, in one of the, the, the richest, most expressive casks that we could use. So this is, this is very much at the, at the far end of Glengoyne, but still Glengoyne. And the, the Glengoyne you're more used to trying in a bar or in a, or in a store would be light on this because with our, with our 10, 12, 15 year old, for example, we're mixing first fill casks with second fill casks. And when you fill a cask a second time, it's a great maturation vessel. All of the, the harshness of the new make disappears, but you don't pick up as much of that, that richness from the oak. There's not the same level of tannins. Uh, for a single cask, Glengoyne, I think, I think this is outstanding. I mean, we, we, could, end, we could end now, we, mm. and we won't. Because no, no, we no. We found a great whiskey here, haven't we? We found, a, found yeah. a very good whiskey here, a very good whiskey. Uh, but we've still got two more to go, and we've got high hopes as well. No voting yet. Wait till no, no, we get no, the no, end here. Listen, yeah. we've got loads of questions crashing in tonight online. Still plenty of time to get in touch with us as well. You can do it via Twitter, of course, as well. First one is from uh, Xavier in Paris. Bonsoir. Good. Um, he asks, can you tell us a bit more about the type of <coughs> cask in Caskey? We talked a little bit about that earlier. Give us a bit more details about that first sherry fill. This is... Uh this is a, a, a typical standard sherry butt. This this will hold about 500 liters, so it's the biggest of the casks. Uh, as you get, it's it's all it's all oak. It's it's all European oak. As uh, you've got two two main types, you've got American and you've got European. So this is the European oak, and uh, what does that give? That's more more porous. Yeah, it's more like, porous. Yeah, you, so you're gonna get you get more evaporation from this cask. You'll also get more oak interaction and the, the, the European oak has filled with effectively spicy things, a uh, little flavour uh, compound uh, eugenol that, that, that's in the wood that, that ends up giving that spicy richness to it. The American oak cast, so we have some, we have some bourbon cast just behind us here. Okay. We don't have many bourbon casts at Glengoyne, we've got just a couple of percent of our stock probably. But these ones here will give uh, more uh, citrus, coconuts, lighter elements etc. The, the wood's more closely grained, so the, the whisky can't get in and attack it the same way. But with these casks, the whisky, every, every day as it, as it heats up slightly, it'll rush into the oak and pull a lot of that richness and particularly spiciness out, Robbie. That's right. And that's, that's very typical. That, that's exactly what we're tasting here. Cinnamon this as well. This is European yeah. oak with yeah. spice, with tannins, with concentrated flavours. You, you would never get anything like this in terms of colour smell or, or flavour from an American oak cask. Mm. I mean, these are, these are great. They just deliver something very, very different. Robbie, how will this change? It's now out of its, the environment it's been in for 25 years. How will this now change as it goes through the bottling later tonight before it comes out to you? How will this it develop? Won't, it won't change at all. That's it now. It'll change. What, what we've done now is we kind of, this is now a, a time capsule, if you like. Once it's out the cask, it stops maturing. So it's no longer in, in contact with the oak. So we've, we've delayed the aging process on this wee section. Everything else is getting a bit older, but this, <laughs> this isn't. You know, so uh, this is a great environment to be if you don't want to get any older. So whoever orders a bottle, they will get it as this. Okay. You know, be no, there's no, nobody else will be influencing it from this point onwards. All right, you're watching Glenn going live. Just to prove we're live, have a listen for a second. That's the rain on the roof here. It's been a fierce day, isn't it, weather-wise? But that, that rain will be in casks like this in 25 years' time. Mm. I mean, without the rain, we don't make whiskey. That's what a great way to think about it. Th that's why we're always cheery, no matter what the weather's like. <laughs> we need it. Right, this one I think I'm going to give to Mark on uh, camera one here. This is yours, Mark, for a little bit later. Okay, enjoy. 
Um, he's happy. He's, he's very happy. happy. Look at he's that happy. Happy. I, but for later, I said later, yeah. not now. You've got a job <laughs> to do. I've seen him smile. <laughs> right, uh, I think it's time now to... Actually, we'll take one more question before we go on to cask two. Um, Alex is asking us, evening, Alex. Why did they not add water to release the flavours when we were doing a tasting here? Just as it I'll came. Yeah. You, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question. Alex. We have some water here. Uh, normally, you would put in a, a wee bit of water just to, just to release it. But we've got a wee bit of, wee bit of experience, Stuart and I, in uh, tasting uh, Glengoyne and Sherry Casks over the age of 20. And to be honest with you, it doesn't really do the best with water over that age. It just dries right it, it up. It dries it up. It's like yeah. chewing in a bit of oak or something. Yeah. I mean, I'm quite happy to do it with this one. We might be proved wrong. Well, maybe we can do it. If this, if this was one. younger, perhaps 17 years or younger, you would, it'd be a good <coughs> idea to put a wee bit of water in it. But it tends to just become nothing but dry and, dry and oaky. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. We're a little, a little bit away there, but what it does do quite interestingly is it, it separates, you know, oil mm -hmm. and water don't mix. You so you can see the little, yeah. little long chains of uh, polymers and mm -hmm. fatty acids. And, you know, that's, uh, that's just the separation you're going to get when you put water in. And we'll see, I mean, maybe, maybe this one will be different, Robbie, and it's probably worth trying with water, but typically you're right, it does just dry up. But Come on, Robbie, try it with a drop just so that you can... Uh so you can shame. taste like with like there. I'll get no more than that. Yeah. It, is, it, is, it is drying up, but not to the extent I've seen with some of them. I'm not sure it benefits. Maybe it's just we're used to drinking whiskey at 55% alcohol, Robbie, but... I mean, that Any advantage to it at all, Robbie, are you getting? No, it's, it's brought nothing to it. Okay. It hasn't. It's, it has actually dried that up. And that's, to me, that's where I would expect it to go. With our, with, in terms of Glengoyne, I, I do always add a wee splash to 10, 12, 15. Try leave and see what you think. Once I get to even 18 and, and particularly 21, I don't, I don't think it benefits much from water. That bitterness, you know, has just come out now. So what you've got there, yeah. isn't it? It's, it's totally transformed yeah, you've it. You've lost that sweetness. You've, you've lost, lost those flavour notes that yeah. we were talking yeah. about. Okay. And that really just comes because we've tried a lot of whiskies in our day. And we know what Glengoyne does at a certain age. And we know if it's, if it's an Oloroso cask as these are, over 20, put water in and you've lost it. So if anybody does purchase one of these bottles of whiskey, I wouldn't advise them. Good question, it. Alex, yeah. but there you go. That is right. a good question, very good question. Guys, we need to move on. To, we could talk about this all night, because yeah. Yeah, it's a lovely complex whiskey with lots to talk about, but it's time for cask B now. And uh, again, no voting yet. Save your votes for uh, the end of the process when we've got through all three casks. The dog is back in again. This is lower. This is a lot lower, this one. This is, this is, feels like it's less than half full. 26 years old. This, this is 26 years old. This one was the 19th of May, 1987. And it was 63.6% .6 alcohol when it was uh, filled into cask. And again, Stephen, where the cask is sitting can play a role in terms of uh, evaporation. It's all about the difference between cold and hot. So if you're down in the bottom row of the, th of the three layers in this warehouse, it, it, it won't get as warm as the ones that are near the top, particularly if they're near where the, where the roof comes down into little valleys. Because when that heats up, it acts as a radiator, which heats up that top cask. So you'd expect more evaporation from the ones higher up than the ones lower down. And, you know, there are, that's one of many reasons that it could just be, be slightly different. How often will these casks be moved in a lifetime? A 25-year-old cask, how many times will that move? Probably, probably never. Yeah. Probably never. It's not just well, distillation that we're slow at. Though, isn't it? Yeah, we're quite, we're quite lazy that way. Yeah, we don't, we don't do anything we're left told. Yeah. yeah. And it, but, but, but that in itself gives you a lot. If all the casks turn out differently, that's quite a good thing. Mm -hmm. Because it gives us a, a when, I mean, what, what Robbie does is one thing. He, he makes exactly the same new make spirit every day of the week. He puts it into casks, it ends up tasting totally different when it's mature. And we've got Gordon and we've got John through, through, uh, through at, our, at our head office, whose job it is to pull those flavours together when they're creating the 10, the 12, the 15. So these single casks are great, they all taste different. But when you're trying to create the rest of our whiskey range, you're looking for continuity. And the more flavours you have, and the more smells you have, actually makes it easier because you've always got something different to add if you want to make a consistent 15-year-old, 18-year-old, etc. Okay, now I'm seeing colour difference immediately. Yep. Yeah. Slightly lighter. Yep. Even in this low light. 
Just remind people who are maybe just tuning in, what are you doing here again? Again, we're just establishing this strength. So we're putting in the thermometer and the hydrometer and whatever they settle down to, we then just go against the chart and that tells us exactly the strength. I'm quite interested by seeing these bubbles forming on this, uh, the hibiscus here, which tells me this whiskey is going to have more flavours than this one. I'm expecting this to be a deeper whiskey than that, just by these, these wee bubbles there. What, is that, what do they tell you? It tells me perhaps there's a bit more strength in there. Mm -hmm. So it's got two things. You get these bubbles when it's, when it's stronger or there's more flavour. So hopefully we'll get both of them. Alcohol strength and more flavour. So we'll just have a wee look. So just check There's the magic book. Yeah, just check the temperature first, which is sitting at. This is actually, believe it or not, it's slightly cooler, that cask. It's five and a half degrees. So why that one was six and that's five, that must be the must have been the heat coming from you, Stuart, on that other one. And I <coughs> it might just be getting colder, Robbie. Oh no, it feels no. like it. And this one again, so that was five and a half. And we've just got a hydrometer reading of 930.6. So five and a half, 930.6. Into the magic book. 930.6. Well, this is, uh, this is 55.1% alcohol. So this one was 52.6. Mm -hmm. This is 55.1. Just as you guessed yeah. from and the... It's just looking that little bit stronger. Right. But look, going by the, um, the amount that's in there, there's been more evaporation with regards to volume, but not as much evaporation with regards to the alcohol strength. So again, that's two different casks, and they've both matured in a different way. And nobody really knows why that's happened. So Stuart's done our pour. I've done a pour for, for us, but uh, I saw the look in the rest of the crew's face when you gave that, <laughs> that camera one. So oh, I'm going to just, smiling I'm gonna now, just right, keep yeah, them all okay. happy. Yes. You don't want them turning. Let's have a whoop for that, guys. <laughs> whoop, yeah, yeah. There. there you go. Very excited with this. There you are. What a nice man. There you go. <laughs> You've got to remember to come back, Stuart. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. <laughs> I left my glass here. Right. right, Robbie, what are we seeing straight away up at the well, light? We are seeing a, a change in the colour. It's tis slightly lighter. But like the other one, it is sticking to that glass, mm. but it's perhaps a wee bit slower than coming down, so perhaps it's just a little bit uh, more gloopy, as you say. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thicker, isn't it? But I don't know how that looks, how that looks to the people, where, you know, the viewers, but from here, it's an amazing colour. Again, it's wow. taken as much as it possibly can out of that cask over the last 26 years. On the nose, Stuart? Oh, it's fantastic. There's, there's more immediate fruitiness, mm. uh, brambles, uh, blackberries. It's massive brambles, isn't it? Yeah. Fact, is the, the brambles is the first thing. Why am I, th I'm rum from a sherry cask? What am I thinking? What's happening here? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think you're right. I think there's a bit of a, it's almost like that rum and raisin type of. Ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a bit of that. And you know, if you, if you, if you buy a good rum, if you buy an aged rum, you know, they're matured in similar casks, mm -hmm. the same, the same wood, obviously. And, and you know, you're going you're to get a little bit of that. It's like, a, zesty it's as like well. a very good yeah. mature rum, but uh, there's a hint of that there. Yeah, yeah there's some sort of and zesty lemony kind of thing going on. So, I mean, that's just, just, just from the nose. Good. I mean, you've got, you've got that brambles, you've got lemons, mm -hmm. you've got rum and raisin. You know, you've got, obviously, you've got the sweetness in there too. So that's just, and that's just in the nose. Oh, that's fantastic. That is an absolutely amazing Right, beer. on the palate. You get a sticky, you can feel the sweetness in your lips. It's almost like sugar coating your lips. And then it does, it does dry once you've swallowed it to an extent, but probably not the same as the first one did. There's, there's dryness there to give it balance, but it's not as tannin. It's not as, I, I won't say better for the first one, but compared with this. Mm. Oh, this is, this, this is has got bigger flavours. Yeah. This has got bigger flavours. This has got that sweetness, but it dries very quickly. You know, it's not like a, a cloying kind of sweetness. Mm. It's kind of a, it's there, but then it changes very quick into something. It's right on the tongue, isn't it's it? It's right in tis, yeah. It's that kind of lemony coming through as well. Lemony it's and it starts off, the first thing's a wee bit of honey, and then it goes a bit citrusy, and then it dries a bit. Ooh, this is, this is, this is fantastic. Mm. I mean, I love this one. Because mm. I mean, as we said earlier, I mean, we, we nosed these in the warehouses before when we were drawing the samples. You know, we haven't actually been through a proper process with this. This is 
this is in a way surprised me that it's quite as upfront, quite as fruity. I mean, to have the fruit that you created during the distillation 26 years later still coming out strong, old casks can sometimes get, get a little bit oaky uh, and you don't want that to dominate. And I think this has got balance, this has got great balance. I can't believe the difference between the two. Totally. And yet the start and the cask is exactly the same thing. It's just the, it's an amazing journey and nobody really knows what's happening. I'm getting eucalyptus in there as well. You know, like this medicinal, you know, very gentle. So you said, Robbie, the first one was a sort of archetypal Glen Goyne for you. How would you place this one? Well, as in, as in a preference or I would have, where I would put it? Is, does this seem, to, does this represent what Glen Goyne is to you? Is it Glen Goyne with an edge? How I would you? say this is the uh, right church, but just on a different pew. <laughs> Yeah, that's enough. I like that. Yeah, it says it's you can you can recognise it being Glen Goyne. I would say that one was definitely you know that's what you'd expect. This has gone on something that's kind of slightly slightly to the right of it, and but it's it's a nice pleasant surprise. That's something that I've really experienced too often at Glen Goyne. Who were you last in church? I know, I know. I read about them. Oh. I didn't read them. All. Stuart, for you, I I, I mean. It dep- I'd, I'd like to be objective about, about all the cast, and I don't want anyone to, to, to vote now. We've still got another one to come. For me, this is absolutely fantastic. This is, this is one of the nicest casts of Glengoyne I think I've ever tried. And we, we released wow. a lot of great single casts over the years. And we, we spend a lot of time in warehouses, but this is, a, for me, this is absolutely brilliant, Robbie. No, 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 it's lovely. But where I'm a bit worried is that one's a lot lower than that one. So you we'll, know, we'll get less bottles. So we're going to get less, lot less bottles out of this one. So the, again, the accountants probably say, "No, pick eight, <laughs> You know, because we'll get probably double the amount. In, but in round number terms, that might be five hundred bottles. This could be. I think it's fifty. I think it's probably be quite a big percentage less yeah. just by dropping in the wee dog there. It What's feels great about tonight is that the accountants don't get we don't to care. choose. No. No, no. You get to choose. No, we don't care. You get some up to you I this think, evening. They might be watching, but they only get one vote like the rest <laughs> of the <laughs> I think if we were if we worried about accountants, we wouldn't be producing Glengoyne the way we do. You know, we could we do we could oh, do it good. a lot faster, speed things up, get a lot more mashes through, get a lot more whiskey production. But it wouldn't be about what's, what Glen Goyne's about. It's about, as we said earlier on, it's a dedication to what's right. That's you know, a really good point. Detail. Given the demand, worldwide demand from you watching all around the world for Glen Goyne, you could speed this process up, but you never yeah. will because it's not what you do. No, and I think that's right. That's it. That's the great thing about the distillery, Robbie mentioned earlier, that we've got, a, we've got a stillman that started working here. There's two of the guys on the stills that started in the, in the mid to late 70s who learnt from a guy that, 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 that probably started in the, in the early 50s who goes back to a guy from the 1930s. It doesn't take that long to trace your way back, yeah. right back. You know, it's, it's word of mouth and it's not going through that many pairs of hands. It's just about doing it the right way. And to be fair to uh, Ian McLeod who bought Glen Goyne 10 years ago now, it was very much whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And that, you know, you've, you've, got, you've got free reign to keep doing what you're doing. There's no pressure there. I see it for you, McLeod Distillers, then. Oh, How's that going down back there? Great. Yeah, They're all happy. Yeah, good, I think nice. camera three's gone slightly out of focus. Should have had some water in that. <laughs> all good. Shall we? Right, we, we have to go in. now to our final cask, mm. cask C, this evening. I'm looking forward to this. 27 years old. I mean, if it's better than the last one. I'm going to be a happy man, Stephen. <laughs> and this is uh, a special cask for another reason, Robbie, as well. 27 this, years old. This cask had its birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. Okay. So on the 6th of November, 1986, this, this one was filled into wood, so it was 27 years old yesterday. You should have a tiny candle on the top of your vest. That's probably not a great uh, idea in here. <laughs> not unless you want to do your tasting on the top of the hill. <laughs> you know. Okay. That's, that's different again. What are you getting this thing? Oh yeah. That is different again. I don't know what you're picking up there. It doesn't not get in the, the powerful alcohol coming through. And it feels that it's higher than the middle one, but perhaps not quite as high as the first. Is and that we, a surprise? Well, it is because it's oldest. Mm. You know, it's the eldest. So you'd expect it, I mean, look at the color. You'd expect the eldest one to have more evaporation, you know, more maturation. Well, it's definitely had more maturation, but you'd have expected to lose a wee bit. And once again, for people just joining us, that may just be because of where it was stored and how it was that it, it could be that, yeah. Uh, but, but every tree that we, it, almost every tree that we use is different. 
I mean, in terms of in terms of the flavour it's going to deliver, the evaporation it's going to deliver. The the trees all face different set of circumstances in the forest. You know, they've got they've got different nutrients in the soil. They've got standing m maybe more shaded from the sun or whatever. They all they all develop in different ways, and it's one of the one of my favourite things about our industry: the fact that we fill these casks. And we generally don't know how they're going to turn out. Mm -hmm. We're not turning on a tap and filling a bottle and putting it on the shelf the next day. And I'm, I'm, I love that. I think that's the, the, the best thing about it. So this, we'd expect this to taste different because obviously the older they get, the more separation they get. If you wander down a road, after 10 years they're still quite close together. After 25 years they've kept going in their own direction. So if this tasted the same as either of these two, I'd be quite surprised. So our final tasting tonight on Glen Goyne Live. Uh, keep your questions coming on Twitter. One just come in just now. From what bodega do we get the casks? That's the kind of detailed thing that we like from the Glen Goyne family. Well, we've, we've both been down and had a look at it, Robbie. Uh, it's a, a, a company called Tavasa that we work with down in Jerez. Uh, and uh, they, they look after casks for ourselves and for one exceptionally good uh, Speyside sherry, quite famous malt that you might have you might have heard of before starts with an M, and uh, they are they are great. They deliver what they what they promised. So uh, the answer to that is Tavasa. We're coming up to the time when you are going to be able to vote on your favourite uh, based on our tasting notes, A, B or C. And we're about 15 minutes away from when the bottling will start and you will be able to buy this, having chosen yourselves what will be the new bottling of Glengoyne. Robbie, what say you? It's five and a half, so it's the same as the previous one. So if you can look at five and a half on that, and then if you can look down to nine, thirty. 33.6 I would love to Robbie but I don't have my have specs. glasses right so it's fine so <laughs> how come he can see this Stuart and we can what's going on it's the whiskey he drinks oh, yeah. <laughs> people talk about carrots Stephen but it's not that it's, it's the whiskey 53.6 percent alcohol for that last one so it's between just so between the first one and the second one okay and what I'm going to do is just Stuart's got his... I'm going to pour you and Robbie in here so we know we've definitely got the right ones here. Yep. Uh, I've got mine there. The crew are getting none of this. This is too old for the crew. It's you wasted in there. No, you don't want to do that. So there's one for you, one for Robbie. Mine's Robbie, just there. I think this is before the crew were born anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what I've done is we're actually going to... This is, this is the benefit of a live event. I have picked up the first cask bottle put it in there so that's going out right and we're going to get the right one now because if you taste the first one that we did all over again it's not going to work that would I'm, be a good test though wouldn't I'm, it? I'm double checking this is a 1986 going in now guys just to prove it's live your one got a little bit mixed up there but now we are on the right road you took a whiskey out of my hands and you didn't get a punch in the mouth then did you notice that that's the first time you know that's the first time and don't ever do it again though okay oh, okay Robert. right i'll let okay. that off and the let, way you threw it, it down there as well, that's I know the he, man there is just he's yep. licking the pavement. They actually went on some of the equipment, but we're not going to tell these guys <laughs> that. Okay. All right, what are we seeing? Let's get started here. It's a similar, it's a similar colour. Mm -hmm. Again, you'd expect a similar kind of colour. Closer to one, that, to it, A than to B. I think, you're, I think you're right, yeah. There's a nice redness there, isn't there? Yeah, uh, it's looking super through those lights. Amber, something like that. So this is, this oh, is it's different. It's sweet, but it's different yeah, sweet from the last yeah. one. It's this is syrupy, light lighter. Maybe maybe a bit, but oh. that uh, there's that uh, instead of the, instead of the brambles, you're getting more like a kind of rose hip. Rose hip. Yeah. It's kind of it's that kind of thickness. This That's a superb nose. <sighs> that is an absolute amazing nose. Wow, that is super. There's a lot going on. This is probably yeah. more probably more complex than the last one. And that last one was there. excellent. Mm -hmm. How do you describe it? It gets harder as you keep going. We're now three whiskies in to, to, to try and find the right adjective. Well, there's a lot of common themes, and, obviously, you know. because that is going going, isn't it? Yeah. But there's that brown sugar there. That that what's the really deep, rich muscovado? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's it's that type of thing. Yeah. Remember when you were a kid uh, and you used to eat cola cubes. I still do, Robbie. Oh, no, I still do. <laughs> yeah, when you're not eating your sticky toffee pudding. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my diet. Sticky that's toffee pudding, cola cubes. Well, five no, you're years. right, that's in there. 
Maybe some Sweet. of that red apple. Mm, again, the red apple, yeah. But again, you, oh, you, wow. wouldn't, you don't normally expect it to take out something sweet from, a sh from an Oloroso sherry, you know, these European oaks, because essentially the, you'd expect that more from a bourbon, but that's still, that is still the Glengoyne, so that is the memory of the distillery, of the new mixed spirit from 27 years ago yesterday, is still in the heart of this whiskey. So the cask, again, hasn't had it all its own way, so it's brought enough to the, to the party, but it hasn't took everything from the new make, and that's excellent. First that on the fun. palate, Stuart. You know, the first thing is you get a real tingle in your tongue, and I don't know if that's the alcohol strength. I mean, they're all broadly the same, but... Roughly a couple of you, percent. You really feel the, a kind of tingly sensation. It's, uh, it's spicy, it's rich, it's fruity. Mm. Wow. It's soft, isn't it? Ooh. The longest, probably, of all three. It's, it's soft. I mean, it's straight away, it's, I think you're right. it's so gentle. I think. And the longer yeah. it goes on, whereas before we were, we were seeing spiciness that might be something like, I think we talked about cinnamon earlier if my memory serves me correctly, after three full-strength large whiskies. <laughs> I think we're now into, it's more like a, it's more peppery, mm -hmm. it's more, there is a spiciness there, but it's not the same cinnamon. A little bit of chilli, that, that's... It's that got that chilli after, right? For no, that's, that's a good call. Well, it's got that, yeah. yeah. You can tell you've got a food yeah. background. Yeah. You've, you've been drinking whiskey. And, yeah. We're getting to the stage where we need to uh, look back on this and try and sum this up. But before we do that, let's, let's deal with this one. How does this sit with the other two? I think we're getting, we're getting back onto uh, more familiar ground with Glen going with this one. Mm. Uh, and it's an, it's an absolutely amazing whiskey. Mm. You know, this is top notch. It's great. It's top it's notch, great. isn't it? It's it, great. It, it really mean, is. It's so gentle. I mean, you, you're drinking something there that's 53, 54% alcohol. Yeah, you don't know it. Certainly don't know it in the mouth. I mean, it's down, it's going down my throat and it's just gentle and it's just nursing all the way down. And it's still giving, you know. This is really, really long. This is long. This is long. This is perhaps the longest. taste that tomorrow morning. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. With your breakfast, yeah, <laughs> hopefully. This is a very long finish. It's actually, it, it dries a bit more on the finish than the last one, I think. Yeah. It, for, for that's me not anyway. a bad thing. No, no, no. no, no, no that's not, not a bad, bad thing. Yeah. And that's, I mean, 25 years in, in, in rich European oak, you're going to get some dryness coming in. I mean, I'm not saying it's overdone, I'm just saying there's probably a bit more dryness as it finishes. You know. but, but what's there, I mean, you talked about the chilli, there's that kind of warmth as well as dryness when it finishes. It's, do you know, I'd be, if I went round to your house, Stephen, and you poured me three whiskies all night, A, B and C, I'd be a very happy man. Yeah. So, I mean, how we, how we choose from that, I don't know, but... None yeah, of these are disappointments. No, no, they're all outstanding. These two feel the most connected, don't they? This one feels... That's, yeah, the, the, the middle one, B, is doing its own thing. That's not a bad thing. That, no, that's doing its own thing. Uh, whereas A is, a is a very good dram. You know, it's uh, it's very typical of what you'd expect. C's, C's just kind of magnified it and brought it to a different level. All right, we, yeah. um, we need to get to the point where we start to take a vote on this. So let's just quite quickly, both of you, sum up each of these three. Let's go back to the beginning. 25 years old, Caskey. What do we think of that? It's a very credible single cask. Uh, it's uh, super. It's got it's got a, a big blast of the uh, the oakiness coming through, but it's also got that. Uh, it was the butterscotch. It was one. butterscotch it coming was, through. Uh, yeah. It was a stewed fruit that you that you mentioned earlier. The spiciness came from the cinnamon. Very very typical Glengoyne cask. I mean. Fantastic. Be very happy with that. Uh, B was, as you said, down a slightly different route. Mm -hmm. I, I have to say, Brandles. I, mean, I thought I thought B was probably just because there was a slight quirk to it. Yep. Uh, I thought it, I thought it was absolutely outstanding. Okay. It's just you know there, there won't be many casks in the warehouse that taste like that, but which also embody the Glen Goyne house style. I mean, it wasn't going down a different road completely. No, no, but no, there was no. something really interesting and really different yeah, about it. Yeah. I loved, I loved B. It was, uh, you know. And C again, I think it's similar to A, but with it with a with a bit more to it. To yeah. be honest, with a longer finish, with it's almost like A on steroids, if you like. It's just more, <laughs> like it's more pumped up. It's more <laughs> the, the fruit's bigger, the oak's bigger. It's the big the, brother. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's the, the busty boy. This is the big it's brother. The big, it's yeah. the big brother to A. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, you probably got it down to perhaps you know there's one there's there's two very excellent, very very good whiskies there, and. Even the one, it's 
if you if you like your whiskey with that kind of style, I think you'd be quite happy with that. Mm. Right, we don't get to choose no, tonight, though. We will actually decision. tell you, just before 8 o'clock, we'll tell you what were our favourites, but it's your decision tonight. This is an exclusive, never been done before. You get to choose the next bottling of Glen Goyne. So will it be A, 25 years old, B, 26 years old, the one we've all decided is different and has something special to it. Is that what they're going to go for? I wonder. Or will they go for the classics? The A or the C, the birthday boy, 27 years old. Voting opening now on the website. You've got about 10 minutes to vote and we will reveal the result, which is going to be bottled at 8 o'clock. And then it goes straight to the bottling and you get a chance to buy it. Let's deal with some questions while we're waiting. Dave Anderson. Evening, Dave. He asks, can distillers claim every batch is the same? Of, we would, we would strive to have every batch of our 10, 12, 15, 18, 21 year old to be the same each time. And the way we would do that would be by combining casts together. And we, we mentioned Gordon, uh, Doctor, and we mentioned John Glass earlier. And their role is to make sure that happens. Robbie's got the easy job. He makes whiskey the same. He does. And, yeah. that, and that's why they're paid more. I mean, that, that's one <laughs> yeah. he, he makes whiskey the same day after day. Robbie and his team have to get continuity of the new make spirit. We then put it into these casks and they go down all the different roads we talked about. And at the far end, Gordon and John pull them together to make sure that it's the same. So with a batch of, of 10 year old, John will be combining dozens of casks, some first fill sherry, some second fill, all sorts of different flavors and styles. And his job is to make sure that it looks the same it smells the same and it tastes the same because we don't add any colouring or anything to it. So look, smell and taste have to be exactly the same batch to batch. If you're talking about single cast, they are, each cask is very different as, mm. we've, as, we've, as we've seen tonight. Mm -hmm. So it's probably the... I've been surprised the difference between the casks this yeah. evening. Really surprised yeah. actually. Yeah. And that's three exactly the same identical casks, you mm. know, and, it, and they're still gone, gone on a different journey and done their own different things. Mm. If we put in a bourbon there, you know, as one of you know two but two shows and one bourbon, then you'd see a, a complete difference. But you'd expect that. That is the surprise, and that is a, that is the wonder of uh, single single malt whiskey, isn't it? Hey, great question, just in from Ian, I think on Twitter. Keep them coming. We've still got five minutes left. What will happen to the two casks that don't win tonight? Stuart gets one, and I get <laughs> I get the other. That's pretty much the way it works. Oh, the crew it? are looking very disappointed <laughs> yeah. here with that news. Uh, no, seriously, what happens to them? I think we'll. I think these will be earmarked for. I mean, they're. They're very special. You don't want to do the wrong thing with a cask like that. These could be future single casks. Mm -hmm. They could end up in a Glen Goyne 30 year old or a, even a 40 year old in the future. But when they, when they taste as, as good as that, we, and they're as interesting as that, I think we might find a use for them. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, no current plans, but they'll be, they'll be earmarked and, and, and kept aside in their ledgers with a little star beside them. So You're not going to lose sight of these no, guys. We, so may, we may even roll one or two of them out next year if we do this again and just see what they've done over the next 12 months. Because mm. they'll, they'll, they'll change over the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Magnus is asking, we've dealt with this quite a lot tonight, but it is, it's, it's a key part of the story here. What makes Glengoyne casks so special? Uh, how's that changed maybe down the years? You know, 1833 through to today, how has the cask history changed at this place, Robbie? Obviously you've been here from the very early days. <laughs> Not since 1833. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think I think you know modern modern distillers uh, distilleries, you know they they've got, they have more of a, ha a handle now in what produces a good a good spirit and you know you're putting all this effort into producing that good spirit you want to put it into the best possible wood you can get there's no point in you know spent putting all that time and effort in producing the best new mix spirit and then just putting it into something that's pretty random you know so you know these these are the best we can do these these are the best casks in the market globally you couldn't get anything better than what we've got at uh, Glengoyne I mean that's that's a fair comment and if you can find if you there is why haven't you bought them I think so but also this is us sticking to our to our roots I mean we've been using sherry casks since some unknown point in the mid 1800s if we change now then then yeah. we'll ch other people use bourbon casks and they make there's some great whiskies come from bourbon casks we're not the only great whiskey maker in Scotland no, 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 it's no, just no. this is this is our style. Unfortunately, we're saddled with the most expensive Pizza. way yeah. of maturing. Whereas when we first started using them, there was a lot of empty sherry casks in London because a lot of sherry used to be bottled in London. And we would take these transportation casks that came over from Spain to be oh, bottled in London. Okay. So we've gone from using the cheapest possible source to it's all turned its head. We're, we're saddled with, the, with, with this great expense. But 
if we stop using them, Glengoin becomes something different yeah. and we just can't. Part of the reason that people love it. People watching all around the world tonight. Great question just in from Kelvin. We're in only one warehouse tonight. How many casks are being stored on site tonight here? In the total site, we've got uh, just over 22,000 casks is, a, is at uh, Glengoin. So it's a lot. It works out at just under 4 million litres of alcohol are sitting at Glengoin as we speak. Oldest cask that's in the warehouse? The oldest already? cask isn't as old as you think. It's uh, 1983 in this, in this particular room here, this, but this warehouse, 1983, which mm. I suppose is still quite old. Yeah. Right, we've got two minutes left on the voting, fo folks. Two minutes to decide. Cask A, 25 years old. Cask B, the one we decided, all of us agreed, was had something different about mm -hmm. it. And cask C, which Stuart beautifully described as Blend going on steroids? Was that it? Yeah. it. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was like that, yeah. Right. Uh, we are getting to the final stage of voting. It literally is your last chance. You only get one vote, so don't go back and try and do it again. But we're into the last minute now of voting. And I think probably that's the stage where we can reveal, because it's done and dusted now, what were our favourites from the three. Robbie, for you. For me, I'm still holding it. It was, uh, it was C. It was C. It's... Because it's, it hasn't gone on this quirky path. I mean, B is fantastic. If, 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 if the punters go for B, I'll be delighted. I'll buy a bottle, I'll buy two. Uh, but this is, this is exactly where I would expect Glen going to be after 27 years. And it's kind of a moment where you stick your chest out and thinking, this is what I wanted my baby to grow up to be. And it's, it's really fulfilled my expectations. And this is an absolute amazing whiskey. It's fantastic. Job well done. Oh, it's a job well done. The guys had a really good day. Stuart, for you. I'm going B, Stephen. B? I, I think there is something wonderful about B. It's still Glengoin, but with a little yeah. twist to it, to, to, to experience so much fresh fruit rather than that kind of stewed fruit. Yeah, to have yeah. Fresh, fruity, for that to have lasted that whole journey down 25 years without the cask kind of mugging the fruit, as it were, without the oak taking over to an extent. I just think this is, this is something quite unique and quite special. But, you know... And for that, for that reason alone, it's worth... You know, it's worth putting that into a bottle mm. because you, you'll never get that. You'll never get that again, I don't think. And Stephen? Well, you know, actually, just to show this is what tonight is all about, I liked A. I liked that I've got a very sweet, sweet palate and yeah. I liked A for the toffiness and the sweetness of it. And I didn't, the long, long finish was a little bit too much for me to see, but that's what tonight is all that's about. It. We're all different. That's what tonight is all about. Yeah. We have reached eight o'clock here at Glengoyne. The rain is falling again on the roof. We've all got a whiskey in our hands and we are delighted to tell you thanks very much for playing along with us tonight because it was a bit of an experiment, mm -hmm. this. It's a first, never been done before, but you've taken part in your droves all around the world, the Glengoyne family. The winning cask we can reveal is the one that Stuart liked. Cask B, very closely yeah, followed done, by cask C. Well uh, done, smudge. chaps. Great choice. Oh, good choice, guys. Good so choice. Um, this one now, cask B, goes off for the bottling, and that process will start in just a few minutes' time. And uh, as soon as we go off here, you will be able to put your orders in and to buy up to two bottles um, from cask B. Now, this is only available for 24 hours, so get in there fast. After 24 hours, it's opened up to the wider Glengoyne family. You'll also get a certificate, which um, is signed by the guys here and uh, authenticates the whole thing and tell us that you were involved in this process tonight. I can tell you actually that Cask C was in the lead until just at the last moment, but was pipped to the post by Cask B. So it was really close all evening. So it's been a great evening here at the Glengoyne Distillery. The crew are all happy, everybody's got a drink. We're all happy because we've got a drink and I think, have we got any B left? Here I've, in our I've glasses. Just my <laughs> I'm onto the scene. I think I've got a B here. Yeah, Have you got a B there? Well, I've got a C. Well, I'll take a B and a C to and toast it with. Um, it's been a terrific evening. We're so grateful to you for joining us here at Glengoyne. The rain falling on the roof. Autumn is here. Cask B is the winner <coughs> this evening, and it will be on its way to you soon. So uh, jump on the website and get your order in. And we leave you just with this amazing view of this fantastic place, where the story of Glengoyne happens the way it always has in 18, since 1833 never changes, never hurried. Thanks very much indeed for watching. And from here, Slange. Slange. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Worst ways to make a living, Robbie.